My advice to cannabis entrepreneurs, to all entrepreneurs, is to follow your passion. Creating a new business is an incredibly challenging and difficult thing. It will demand all of your time and attention. There will be a lot of heartbreak along the way. You will have to endure through many difficult moments. If you don't have a real passion to do what it is that you're doing, it's going to be very difficult to do that. So first, follow your passion. If you do that and you develop a good plan and a good team, the success and the money will follow. Without the passion, it's going to be very difficult. There are so many mistakes and failures in the course of my journey. One of the most spectacular blazing failures really stemmed from my lack of understanding of exactly how deep the stigma around cannabis is on the East Coast, how much deeper it was in California where I'd been operating for several years. So when we went to Massachusetts, the media picked up stories of my 15-year-old cannabis conviction, even though it was for distributing medicine to patients. It sunk the possibility that we would ever get licensed in Massachusetts, and it was a mistake that cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars. As a Californian, the thing that I'm most excited about looking forward to 2016 is the initiative that we'll be running there. Really, I was disappointed that California wasn't the first state to pass a, a cannabis legalization initiative. It's long overdue, and I'm just really eager to see that happen. I lived through the American people electing Richard Nixon twice. I lived through them electing Ronald Reagan twice. I lived through them electing George W. Bush twice. Uh, so I'm acutely aware that sometimes the voters can make terrible mistakes. And when I see the kind of traction that Trump is getting and the kind of hatred he's spewing, it scares me. The best way for anybody to contribute to the cannabis movement it's kind of like the same way that you follow your passion to build a business. There are so many different ways that you can become active. Find the thing that you love doing. So, if you're really into social media, link up with one of the activist groups and help them get their messages out. If you're really into graphic art, if you're an artist, uh, go and help some people who are putting together uh, demonstrations, who are putting out information to put it into a form that looks really good. If what you're really into doing is writing code, uh, sit down and start seeing if you can figure out some algorithms that are gonna help us win elections. Follow what it is that really turns you on, that you're really good at. Bring that skill set and that talent uh, to the movement, because this is a vast movement. It's getting bigger every day. There's a place for everybody to contribute. One of the most compelling pieces of information for people who don't know much about the plant is to explain that our own bodies endogenously produce many of the same or very similar compounds that are produced in the plant and that those compounds are regulated by the endocannabinoid system, the largest neurotransmitter system in the human body and responsible for maintaining homeostasis in every critical life support system that we have. I think that the Discovery and the understanding of the endocannabinoid system, uh, how intimately connected it is with the rest of human physiology, goes a long way to encouraging people to take a second look. I've also found that really compelling human stories. So if you're talking to a mother, talk about the children who have epilepsy, who have had their lives hugely improved with cannabis medications. If you're talking to a veteran or somebody who cares about veterans, talk about PTSD and about how many lives that we could save uh, veterans if cannabis was allowed to be prescribed, was allowed to be recommended to them if it wasn't illegal. There are a lot of really compelling stories uh, and so telling those stories often can sway people. I wrote the Cannabis Manifesto for two reasons. One, I wanted to empower people who already believe in cannabis reform. I wanted to empower them to be the best activists that they possibly could be, to give them all of the latest arguments, all of the latest science in a factual form, easy to digest. 
and then I wanted a document that would also at the same time be accessible to people who are on the fence. There's millions and millions of Americans who are really just taking a look at cannabis in a serious way for the first time. And I wanted them to have a window into our world that was non-threatening, that really presented the facts to them in a, in a clear way. And hopefully we've achieved that. You know, I really credit, some people call them millennials, it's not the term that I prefer, the term that I prefer is the smartest generation, right? Because this is a generation that has an unparalleled ability to collect information, to synthesize that information into new concepts and ideas, to share those concepts and ideas, to take action, and to get things done. And that's a large part of what's been driving the accelerated pace of the cannabis reform movement. So uh, it's just a shout out for me and my heart uh, to all of the smartest generation. Thank you for being here and for picking up this torch and carrying it so brilliantly. Hey yo, positivity reigns and carries like a train. Take away your pain like killers. Some fill the liver with liquor, other pop their lungs full of skunk. And to compensate for misplaced functions, lost at the junction. Now I say life is more visible through a lit up eye. Sockets plugged into light receptors. We're not fueled by darkness, check the tanks empty. We need the sun to synthesize and grow to reach plenty.